What's going on guys? It's Kuday here. Soul farming. I know we don't want to do it. I know. But sometimes you're going to open the pack and it feels like you're begging for souls. <laughs> so we're going to turn those negative souls into positive souls. We're going to show how to farm 500 souls every day easily with 700 if you do everything right. And even 1000 souls on a good day. Which... Few of us probably have those. The last thing we're gonna focus on is quest mode because that's where the majority of our souls are gonna come from. Let's go over the easy stuff. Number one, free ads. Although free ads may invoke thoughts of self we have to do it. We have to do it. It's about 50 to 100 souls every single day. You also get a guaranteed gold, silver, or bronze character and a rare equipment card, potentially uncommon, common. It's just too many things here. You need to do it. And yeah, if all your things say pending and it's not working, well, just know that free ads are not the only thing that can give you souls. So you can just move on to the other activities in your day. Next up, make sure to open your bronze pack and make sure to open your free pack. Next up, battle mode. I've seen those comments from people saying they don't want to do battle mode. Uh, they think it's frustrating. You got to do it. All right. All the way through. Just get it done with. After you're done, it's it's set, it's set and over. Once you complete it, you can use it for farming uh, allegiances. You can use it for farming taunts. Taunts can actually give you damage bonus and whatnot. So you have to farm battle mode and complete it. It can also be a good XP farming game mode. So keep battle mode completed and open, ready to be used if you need to in the future. Uh, challenges. Of course, we know challenges. This should be a no brainer, but farm that 35 and 50, even if you don't want the character in it. So yeah, if it's like a Bo Raicho and you're like, I do not want this character. Well, at least do the silver and the 50 souls. In my case, on my beginner account, I don't have Shinnok, so I can't do this one. That's all right though. I did the one for 35 souls. Didn't take very long. The next thing to do to get your daily amount of souls is Shao Kahn Tower. Now, a lot of people ask me, should I continue Shao Kahn Tower after I max out my talent tree? Yeah, you can still receive a few souls every single day from doing Shao Kahn Tower. Uh, just use the most basic characters, characters that you would never use throughout your day. Why? So you're not wasting resources. So let's say I'm on the early stages, use these kind of characters. Get it over with with bronze characters so that you can, uh, you know, save your stamina. Because stamina is going to cost souls. And even if you have to spend three souls to revive your characters, it's not a huge deal because you're still getting five back from a battle like this. Next up, trials. Trials are a tricky one. Just do a few, okay? Complete a few challenge mode game modes. This That's not going to be difficult because you're going to want to play challenge mode anyways. Uh, complete faction wars, quick battles. Do a few survivor matches, get some faction wars points, just tons of stuff here that can get you uh, high up on the ranking in faction wars. Not only that, so you're going to get some rubies and rubies can buy things that you need like this stuff. We're going to have a guide over what you should pick as a beginner in the future. All that stuff is super useful for a beginner. Just look at this. We're going to have my piles and piles of my souls just claimed all at once. 365 rubies. How many souls? Oh, come on. How many souls? 109 souls. So there you go. Get some souls for completing those faction wars battles what i get elder god kenshi come on comet pass is a little tricky if you can find an easy way to farm it and you enjoy farming the comet pass tiers then go ahead but i don't necessarily recommend it and do not skip do not buy tiers unless the character is amazing and this comet pass i would not purchase the tiers grandmaster sub-zero is a good character but I think there are better choices like Comic Cup Johnny Cage, obviously Hanzo Asashi Scorpion, and uh, eventually in the future, hopefully Classic Scorpion gets ascended too. All right, it's time for quest mode, baby. Let's try to give the most basic explanation of how this works for beginners and late game, because guess what? I have the Netherrealm region unlocked, so we'll go over the best quests to do if you are in the Netherrealm region, which a lot of the mid-range players are. For Outworld, here's what you're going to want to do. If you only have a few towers unlocked, that means only one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say you're on like tower five, right? You don't have six unlocked. So for example, if I didn't have tower six unlocked, what I need to do is do quest 33, bounty. So I'm going to do this one, throw something in there, start it up, 
and gets that quest going. But in the meantime, I still have two active quest slots to use. So I'm trying to get to the um, Netherrealm region by unlocking all these towers and going through the portal. Uh, but I also want to get the most amount of souls every single day. That's easy. While using one of your active quest slots, so you can try to unlock all the towers, at the same time, do some one hour quests. And I would stick to ones that give at least around 13 souls. Of course, you're not gonna get 13 souls. You're most likely gonna get eight or nine because it is not a guaranteed amount. That is only a possible amount. So definitely fill those active spots with one hour quests on the side. How long should you do one hour quests for? Well, it comes down to math which, oh no, 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 I know, I know. All of you guys are screaming and booing. I hate math too. Math does make me wanna fall asleep, but we're gonna try to break this down as simply as possible. Every hour for at least 14 hours throughout a day, log in and refresh your quest every single hour. I know it sounds daunting, but it's only 14 hours in your day. After that, you can put on an eight hour quest. Which, where is that? Here we go, there's an eight hour quest. You get eight hours of sleep. But if you're like me, eight hours of sleep? <laughs> That's wonderful, <laughs> but probably not. So if you're a night owl, well then a four hour quest would be good for you. Of course, this one is on a very high difficulty. So probably try to find something that's not very high on difficulty and set it up twice. There you go, four hour quests. Uh, it's a low difficulty, just do two of those overnight or eight hour if you actually get proper sleep. Wake back up in the morning and do the one hour quest cycle every single day. How many souls is that going to give you? Well, let's go skip and find out how much we get from doing a one hour quest. Don't skip, I'm just trying to show this off. Eight souls. So if we do the math, that's 16 souls for about 13 to 14 hours. We're gonna put 12 hours. Let's just say you aren't doing 14. Let's say you're doing 12 hours every single day. 192 souls a day. That doesn't seem very much, but remember you're also farming the extra quests on the side to unlock more towers, which is probably going to give you about 30 souls a day, give or take. So, okay, so 30 souls for trying to unlock with the extra active quest slot throughout the day. We also have to factor in your about 20 souls every single day when you sleep. So then that's an extra 30 souls. That is 260 souls a day. And remember, we're only farming for 12 hours, not for 14. Times that by 30 days. 7,800 souls in just 30 days alone. And we're only in the Outworld region. So that is not the most you can be farming, but this is a beginner path to farming up to 500 to 700 souls a day. We have to unlock all the towers first, but this is a way to get it done. So you're still getting a ton of souls, but you're unlocking towers at the same time. Okay, Kude, let's say I unlocked all of Outworld and now I'm at the Netherrealm region. What should I do? <laughs> Stay away from Outworld. <laughs> let's go to Netherrealm. Outworld sucks. There's only one problem to Netherrealm, the difficulty. It does increase. So when it's a high difficulty in Netherrealm, it's a lot worse. At just Tower 11, the first quest is a one hour quest with a low difficulty that's one hour that gives 14 souls. Remember from Outworld, it was a medium difficulty for only 13 souls. This is far better. And it's why Netherrealm is just a better region to be farming in. Keep unlocking towers. So do the same strategy of unlocking with one of your active quests every single day until you unlock all of Netherrealm, but at the same time, farm the one hour quests. Okay, for about 12 to 14 hours a day, then do any sort of eight hour quest. If you can't find any, go back to the Outworld region and farm some in the Outworld region and the Netherrealm region. Let's say you have all the Netherrealm unlocked. Now what do you do? We stick to one hour quests throughout the entire day from now on out. If I farm this one right here, quest 112 The Depths, that's gonna, I'm gonna throw classic movie rated in here doesn't even get me maxed. How do I get max without having to put multiple characters in? Gears are what get you up. So what we're gonna wanna do is put Cory Blade on, Quality Ink Scepter, Killer Jacket, and Jensei Hat. Watch me be at 100% now. Oh, well, not 100%. That's not even enough. 
So you can see just how difficult this actually is. Uh, but this is how you can get your chance of success up as much as possible is using gears. There's only one problem with farming quests throughout the day with one hours. Uh, you need to be able to play towers. And if you want to be able to play towers and farm quests at the same time, it's not going to happen. So while you're farming towers, I would try to get it done as soon as possible and then go and do your one hour quest so you're not wasting too much time. If we do one hour quests here, 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 let's put Fire God of King, Noob Cybot, and class we be rated on, we're gonna get a 100%. So we're gonna see how many souls we get, 12 souls. That is a whole lot. Let's calculate this. So let's say we get 12 souls. Here's one problem. This is the only tower to have 12 souls. 16 does not have a one hour quest that gives you 12 souls, only 14. Let's say this gives 10 souls. So 10, so we're getting 12 plus 10 plus 10. That's three active quest slots, 32 souls an hour. We're gonna times that by, let's say 14 hours this time. You're gonna farm the right amount, okay? And if you're doing three eight hour quests overnight, that's probably gonna get you about 40 souls, 30 to 40 souls, so we're gonna put 40. That is 560 souls. Now we're gonna times that by 30. 560 souls times 30, getting you 16 thousand souls in just one month's time this is how you do it boys this is how you farm on the next level and that is how guys that is how you can have enough to afford towers how you cannot be a broke boy the last thing i want to cover is not related to souls but it's a question that people have about quest mode in general as a beginner which is renowns. What should I do with renowns? Renowns will give you extra souls. We didn't even calculate that. So you're probably gonna get a bunch of extra souls over time with all these renowns, extra gears. Yeah, what, what you can be going for is the Karo's Guidance, which is a great gear to increase the amount of loot you get and to shorten the, the quest time. I do recommend using it when you're actually in quest mode, but we're not covering it. We're just, you know, doing the basics here. But there's something that people always ask me about. Gold characters. Yes, Quest 112 has the highest chance of pulling new gold characters. However, we're going to ignore that. Uh, Kude, why are we ignoring that? Because you'd be an idiot if you farmed that quest and skipped so you can try to get a new gold. Don't do that. Hear me out. This is right here and it has a random gold character card chance. This can pull a Denny and Blood Rain, this can pull a Lizard Baraka, this can pull a Lizard Jade, you can get anything from this pack. And it will probably only cost you a few thousand souls to pull a new gold character. But from the quest mode, to get, let's just say, a Denny and Blood Rain, if I just started skipping this one hour quest over and over and over again, we're probably gonna have to spend upwards of 14 to 20,000 souls for one copy of a Denny and Blood Rain. Do not do this. I've done videos about this before, trying to get Lizard Baraka, Lizard Noob, uh, just several other characters. We're gonna continue that series eventually, but I kinda got burnt out on it. You know, spamming the quest button and keep clicking skip, you know. You'd be surprised that it actually can get pretty boring quickly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It also makes no sense to do this anymore because there's a pack to get gold characters now. But Kude, what if I still wanna get new golds? We'll just do this quest every single day. Just do it. Normally, I've seen people get new golds from the quest 112, the depths, just over time without having to worry about it. They just, they're just trying to farm one hour quests. They're not doing anything serious. And that's how you should treat it too. Don't try to force your way into getting a new gold. If it happens, it happens. And it's actually from the renown reward. That's how you get the new gold from the renown reward in quest 112. It's not the quest itself giving it to you, but it somehow increases the chance that the renown will give you the new gold. I've tried other quests, but I just didn't have any luck or success as much as I did in quest 112. And it's a good thing that this is a one hour quest because it makes it worth it to actually farm at the same time. That's me for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. Let me just give a big shout out to my YouTube members. We have Giuliano, Lace, MK God, Jeremy, Oliver, JD Fur, Warlord, JDB, Legend Stone, Sammy, Goku, Titan Beast, Tolga, 
Mr. Dragon, Stan Marsh, Comet Max, Aiden, Katana, Plain Punch, Shox YT, Jeff, Fitzmagic, Massive Cool, Vosislav, and MK Fire. Thank you all for being YouTube members and welcome to the new members. And yeah, peace out.